Hi everyone, so I've been working this week on getting a video up showing the Dark Angels armour uh, how to paint. Um, I had a few problems transferring the video files from my phone to the computer because the file sizes were that large, I just wasn't having it. So anyway, um, I've got the um, Tactical Marine. Um, so it's not a Primaris one, it's just a box standard one. So after doing Primaris, it's quite a um, quite a change to go back to them again. So um, I've got them base coated uh, black and then a couple of thin coats of Caliban Green. Then we're going to go over with an all oil. Now um, I use a quite a big bellied brush. Um, I mean you can get the wash and shave brushes from Games Workshop um, but something that's got a good tip on it but has also got a belly on it as well so. uh, and sorry I was showing there was the um, flow improver that I use so I've got it in a little dropper bottle just to help sort of measure it out so I'm not hefting that big bottle around all the time um, and what I find is if I use the um, flow improver um, first, so with a completely fresh brush, um, get some of that onto the bristles so that it travels up the brush. It then means that when I use paint, whether it's um, thinned down or not, um, and washes as well, that will only travel up so far the brush because there's already flow improver in the brush. Um, there's two parts to that. One, it will help um, keep the paint that you've taken up into the brush wet and also stop the paint from travelling so far up the brush that it gets into the um, core of the brush and then into the um, metal um, and then once the paint's in there it's very hard to get it out again. So um, just on your painting palette if you have a couple of drops of that flow improver and then every now and then just um, run your brush through it and uh, as you do that it'll actually um, release some of the paint that you've got in the brush um, so it will then again help try and clear out anything that has started to dry up. So what, what I'm doing here is um, I've got the Norn Oil and I'm just um, doing a, a recessed shade so I'm not going over the whole model um, with a big fat brush I'm just trying to um, drop it into the recesses. Um, now when you do this you won't always get it completely accurately um, because with Norn Oil and the shape of the models and all that sort of stuff you, you will touch other surfaces anything like that just water down some Caliban Green again and then you can just top up those areas um, this is not too bad See there, I'd um, gone some into a flat area that um, I was able to just dab off before it dried. You can put on as much or as little as you want of the Norn Oil. Um, I like to see um, see a, a good sort of change. Um, but if you just wanted a, 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 a light effect on it, then um, just 
shovel over it quicker with a brush with less on it. Um, I'm, I'm trying to have it um, sort of almost pull in uh, those specific areas as it comes off of the brush. So I travel over the same area a few times and it's, um, it's quite a slow process, but it's the effect that I like to go for. On this specific model, um, I've not done any of the silver, um, but uh, if I was painting it um, normally, what I would do is um, add paint all the silver, add paint the blue of the weapon casing, and then while I'm going over doing the recess shading or oil, I can also do these parts at the same time. Although usually when I do silver and the weapon casing, the eyes, um, I go for a complete coating of it, it's not a um, recess shade. Okay, so just um, trying to show you where I've gone round with it. Um, so you can see the you know the after effect of it all um because sometimes with uh youtube videos you, you don't see it an all around yeah I'm, I'm sorry it's all been rotated in my hands I, i've not got one of those turntables um but just so you get the idea so now moving on to calamaran green just to tough trip on those areas where uh, i did miss you know, it should allow um, a, a good amount of time for the uh, Norn oil to dry um, because if you go in too soon you can end up pulling out um, the wet Norn oil from the recesses and then you're just spreading it around um, It's also a good opportunity to touch up on area, any areas you find that the first two coats of uh, Calibre and Green haven't quite given you the um, full coat, uh, full coverage that uh, you want. So it'll, it'll start to show up more once you've um, handled the model a, a bit more and you concentrate on other areas that will jump out to you. Okay, so onto War Flesh. Now, this is where um, I diverge from pretty much everyone else. Um, I prefer the um, more grim, uh, darker matte look of Dark Angel's Power Armor. Um, I'm, I'm not one for the neon edged Marines. Uh, I used to paint them like that, um, but once I tried it with War flesh and war boss green. It was just uh, that was it for me. That's the way I wanted them to look. Um, so they, I suppose they are still as bright an edge highlight as with warpstone glow and moot green, um, but they just don't have that. Um, that um, I'm struggling to think of the word. That that type of green, that that brightness, sort of to it. Um, but anyway, so what I've done is I've um, watered down the uh, war flesh. Now it is a base colour, so you are going to need to water it down a fair bit. Um, I'm using a, a 4 naught brush there, but it's quite a long bristled one, so it's got quite a big belly on it. But again, I've filled that with um, flow improver, and then it helps keep the tip uh, sorry about going off camera guys um, still not used to doing this and in, in fact when I actually record, uh, made the video for this um, I couldn't find my glasses so uh, yeah that, that, that didn't help too much 
Um, so, anyway, so once you've got your um, tip just the way you want it, uh, you can then start travelling around to up on the corners. Um, now, this was a very slow process. I mean, this took me about two and a half hours um, to shade and highlight the armour. So that might be too much for a lot of people, and I completely understand. Um, and I'm not that quick at painting anyway, uh, but I, I did want to try and get it looking that way sort of thing. Um, so just gradually going round. Um, and with the first highlight of War Flesh, I do go over near enough all of the edges. Um, but when it comes to the War Boss Green, as we'll see later on, it's much more selective. Those areas where um, you're not able to get a 60 degree angle on the brush to be able to do the edge, um, I try and um, move the brush slightly left and right until I've almost made contact with the model. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, when I first started doing this, I was just going in with the brush and um, if I went in a bit too close too quickly um, the bristles will spread out and all of a sudden you'll have paint everywhere and you'll have loads of stuff to patch up and so th those that have got the um, steady hands and the great eyes that can put the tip of the brush exactly where they want it that's great you guys will fly through this but for me you, you'll see that I'm moving left and right over the same area quite a few times just trying to find where the tip is landing. And when it comes to the helmet, um, there's there's a few different ways of doing it. I, I go for um, above the eyes and under the eyes for the highlight. Um, but you'll see on Heavy Metal and uh, some of the stuff that Games Workshop do, they'll have um, highlight lines parallel to um, raised surfaces. So the, um, the obvious one to say for that is the um, top of the helmet you've got that um, raised surface and then they'll have parallel to the um, hard edge highlight again now if if you like that effect and you can um, get it straight enough then that's great go for that I don't do that yet um, maybe if I can get a bit more steady 
I'll, I'll try and do that um, and as you, what you can use as a rough guide is um, where you've got your recess shade use that just just paint along the edge of that recess uh, where the shade has fallen um, and that that can help because then you'll have Calibran green to one side of the highlight and then you'll have Norn Oil on the other side of the highlight and then that will give you that um, that effect uh, but as I say I, I've not done it here because I'm not up to that standard yet um, I do touch on it slightly with the shoulder pads um, I do try and do the corners um, but as, as you'll see it is a little bit hit and miss Apologies for the focus at this point. Uh, I had had stopped um, for a little break, and I forgot to put uh, auto lock on it. So that's as lock now. There's a couple of um, a couple of ways you can approach highlighting. You can either go for the hardest parts first, where you've got the um, highest levels of um, attention and precision, um, where you're as fresh as possible, uh, your brushes as fresh as possible from being clean, or you can um, save those areas for after you've had a bit of practice on easier areas. So, for example, the the legs, you can get a bit of practice um, getting into that uh, highlighting sort of mood, um, and then work on the harder areas, or you you can jump straight into the hard areas and then work on the easier areas as you get more and more tired. As you can see here, I'm trying to do the parallel highlight, but um, it wasn't as uh, precision as I would have liked. Um, so just go as far as you are yeah, happy with. Um, on, on this, I've, I've tried to do uh, the two edges of the rim of the shoulder pad as highlights, but it will leave the highlight very thin. Um, so the result of that, when you go over with your next highlight, um, you'll completely lose the wire flash underneath but if you just do it selectively then where you've not put on the second highlight you will see the first highlight if you go and put on um, a big enough band to show the wire flash after the uh, wall boss screen has gone on um, it will just be a complete coating over the rim Go around now trying to pick out the areas that I missed, and uh, you'll see later on that I spot uh, an area on the right leg where I've, I've missed the bottom of it. Um, since doing the video, I have gone and touched that up so it is ready for the next video.
Now the backpack is a weird selection of one of the hardest and one of the easiest parts of the model to do. You've got a lot of hard edges, so you can get your brush in and just uh, move along the edge of it to drop off the highlight. But you've also got areas where um, it's difficult to get into. Um, you're going around um, uh, um, around. I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of the word because I'm an idiot. Um, as you're following it around and you're trying to pick out the rivets, um, it gets very close to the edge and it's it's difficult to sort of keep them separated. So you've still got that recess in there. And also, if you've already um, fitted the backpack like I have, um, there's areas that it gets quite difficult to get in. As you can see there, it's, it's quite challenging. You need to be careful not to drop it off, drop paint off anywhere else. Now, something I do, and it, just do it however you feel comfortable, how you, you want to look, is I paint Caliban green on near enough all of the backpack. Um, the exhaust vents, you can paint some of it silver, so you've just got that lip, which I'm highlighting now. You could have that silver, or you could have the whole thing silver. Those four little nozzles at the bottom, I've seen some people paint them silver. Um, some leave them the colour of the armour. It's just down to what you what you want your model to look like. It is personal preference. I will admit, I, I do try not to touch the models um, as much as possible, um, but it was an unusual painting position for me, um, so that I could try and record it for the camera. Um, so I did end up handling um, this a bit more than I wanted to, uh, just to try and keep it stable. When it comes to uh, mounting components or anything like that um, onto a base, just just for the modelling part of it, um, I use a two mil um, drill bit, which is in a little handheld um, is it a pin vice? It's like a drill that you just move with your fingers, um, and I'll I'll put a hole into an area that is going to be covered up after it's been assembled so you can see there it's where um, the arm will meet with the torso it'll be completely covered up um, and then just put a, a tiny touch of uh, super glue onto the end of it and that will keep it in place also if you if you do use a paper clip to mount onto something else you can use use that 2 mil drill bit to go into the end of the gun barrel um, and it's just about the right size uh, to look as though it's, it's you know where the rounds will be coming out. I wouldn't suggest putting your paper clip, uh, if you do use paper clip, I wouldn't suggest putting that into the end of the barrel because um, you'll go through the model painting it and then when it comes to taking it off the paper clip um, it will take off some of the paint that you've just done around it so you'll have to redo the gun barrel if you're happy with that or if you leave the gun barrel until after you've finished assembling it all then you know that's that's your choice So here we can see the first highlight's been put on and now we're going to start with Warboss Green. 
So again, um, this is a layer of paint, <clears throat> but uh, still water it down a bit. Um, and then I've, I've dropped down to a, it's actually a 3.0, so it's actually, a, it's, I, I don't know how, but it's a bigger brush than the previous one, but it's got no belly on it. So whereas the previous brush was a 4.0 with a belly, this is a 3.0 without a belly. So it um, it needs to be kept wet more more often with the flow improver, but it is just a bit more precision. So at this stage, I'm just putting it on the areas where more light will sort of catch it. Um, not that I really think of light hitting it with regards to the first highlight. It's just an edge highlight. This I do try and think about what surfaces are facing up. But when it comes to this sort of highlighting, um, there's there's loads of ways to think about it. It could either be um, paint's getting rubbed off because it's on the edge, um, much like chips uh, damage through what he's up to. Um, or you can think about it as um, where the light will hit it. Um, just go for your personal preference. Make the model look the way you want it to look. Um, don't worry about how anyone else thinks of it. Apologies for going off camera again. It's with the um, delicate stuff. It, it was um, more of a case of I, I need to paint it right as opposed to um, smudging it up to, to stay on camera. <clears throat> I'll, I'll try and show um, as much as I can in all of these videos. You can see there we're losing the war boss green, uh, sorry the war flesh with the war boss green going over it. But it's, you, you still have um, war flesh left in areas, so there will be that slight contrast, just not to, on the edges of the shoulder pad.
So now we can see the finished highlights. Um, this is as far as I'll take the highlights myself. Um, they're not uh, dead accurate, but uh, they are as close as I can get to being straight lines. Or neat lines, should I say. So, uh, but take, take the highlighting as far as you want, do what you're comfortable with. Um, if, if you want to go for um, wider bands so that you can see more of a transition, go for that. If you want to just focus on where the light's going to hit, you can leave um, areas under the armour and that uh, much darker. Um, same with the shade, you can um, put a lot more non oil on um, for under the arms, under the backpack, between the legs, that sort of stuff. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.